For the first time in four days, emerging market stocks are showing some signs of life. A rally in commodities and strong outlook for economic growth are pushing the sector higher despite chaos on the streets of Egypt. Our next guest says there are still plenty of buying opportunities in Africa and elsewhere. We're joined now by Andrew Howell, Citigroup's Director of Emerging Market Strategy. Andrew, we talked to you two weeks ago. You said $2 billion had flowed into the frontier, some of the riskiest markets in the world last year. Is that coming to a halt right now? I think in the near term it probably is. Frankly, people look uh, at the images and at the headlines happening here in North Africa. And I think what we've seen is political risk, which had faded from view as emerging markets have done so well over the last few years, is coming back onto people's radar screens. And certainly these smaller frontier markets uh, where political risk always is more important uh, it, it are the types of places people are going to be a bit more cautious on in the very near term. Um, obviously, a lot depends on how things evolve in Egypt and some of the other uh, uh, North African countries right now. Uh, we could easily see uh, some of these frictions resolve a bit and people refocus on the longer term story, which still remains extremely positive. It, it takes, you know, a, a certain holding your nose element, though. I mean, look at the headlines just out of Jordan this morning about a reshuffling of that government. You've got elections being called in the West Bank, uncertainty in Egypt. I mean, if you're putting money to work in the emerging markets, do you avoid the Middle East more broadly right now? Do you avoid North Africa? I mean, I think right now, in the very near term, it very much is a wait-and-see approach that makes sense. So we have to see, you know, how matters evolve, particularly in Egypt, because it is such a large economy uh, within the region, and it's a very large so equity market. So what is, is that actually the trigger, only trigger event? What are you waiting to see specifically that would make you go in? Uh, well, obviously, you know, the key problem right now is, you know, the economy uh, is not operating. You know, you essentially all businesses are closed. We have an, a bank holiday. We don't know when that is going uh, to end. And so you need to see these protests to ease come up with some kind of resolution. And it, it's obviously there are a lot of scenarios here that po political scientists can talk about. We don't really know which scenario it's going to go towards, but we need to see some easing of the protest movement that allows uh, businesses to start working again. And then we can have more confidence in those uh, ability of companies to continue to operate and generate earnings. I mean, the thing about Egypt is the market has come down quite dramatically and looking at the you know likely outlook for co corporate earnings you know the, the, the market's looking quite attractive right now but we just don't know if those companies are going to go back to work or not so that's going to be the key thing and, and, and it could be a matter of days or a matter of, of longer than that where are you seeing money flow towards right now well i think you know the obvious beneficiaries of this type of environment within the emerging markets are going to be your oil exporters uh, because we've seen what's happened to the price of oil uh, so, you know, a, a country like Russia, I think, is clearly going to be a, a near-term beneficiary. But I think, generally speaking, the emerging markets, as you mentioned, over the last several days have been under some pressure. And I think for the time being, people will use this type of volatility, despite the markets today, will continue to use it as an excuse to pare back a little bit on the emerging market exposure, say, OK, I'm going to pull back, let's see what happens here, feel a bit more cautious, and maybe favor the developed markets over the emerging guys. But I think, you know, the, the, the longer-term case, as we said, even the medium term case still is very good in mm -hmm. terms of better earnings growth uh, is ver still very strong momentum for many types of emerging countries for now though in the near term out focus on your oil exporters your places like uh, like your rushes Andrew Howell Citigroup's director of emerging market strategy is with us now from London Andrew we were talking about opportunities once the uh, unrest seems to simmer down whenever that is um, when you look at North Africa and, and the Middle East you got what 20 million unemployed you have prices doubling over the past seven years it raises the worry of tinder boxes that have just been sitting there what are the other areas that you would avoid or hit pause on before putting money to work right now? I mean, I think at the moment, the, the obvious common characteristics between the two countries uh, that we've seen that have seen the most political turmoil, so that's Tunisia and Egypt, um, are uh, countries with uh, large young populations which, uh, with a high youth unemployment rate places which have seen food prices uh, go up quite a bit uh, recently, so generally these are food importers, and then places with, uh, let's say, non-democratic uh, political institutions um, with That's leaders who have been powerful That's a good portion of the world of there, Andrew, you just described. I mean, is, is the trigger there the price of, of rice, the price of wheat, the price of just the basic staples? Is that the, the causal factor? 
Well, I think uh, one key differentiator you need to make is between some countries which uh, are quite a bit wealthier, uh, largely these are the oil exporters of the region, so the Gulf countries, uh, which really can't afford uh, to use those oil revenues right now, of course the price of oil has gone up quite a bit, uh, to essentially uh, cushion the impact of these higher food prices quite a bit. So, you know, I think you would worry more about your non-oil exporters, uh, and there are a number of those countries right now, and we're, we're, we're really watching each of those very carefully. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is important to remember each country does have its own mix uh, right. of uh, political ingredients on the ground, uh, tribal allegiances. Uh, there's, each leader has you know, his own history, uh, which may influence uh, the likely outcome of current events. But we are watching the headlines here very carefully, and I think you do need to be a bit cautious about this part of the world right now. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you for running us through your worldview.